It's often said that quality audio is more important than quality video. For example, would you rather watch a video of me like this, where the audio sounds like ass, but the video is crystal clear, or would you rather this, great audio with mediocre video? Now, I don't know about you, but I'm taking good audio all day. Now, I say all this because today I have 10 audio hacks in Premiere Pro that I think are gonna change your life. But as always, a special thanks to today's sponsor, Motion Elements, but more about that later. So let's get right into it. So if you've ever watched any behind the scenes video ever, then you've probably seen what's called a slate. Now, a slate does many things, but one of its main uses is for synchronization. The clap sound made when the slate is closed helps synchronize the audio and visual components of the footage. By aligning the visual cue of the clap with the corresponding spike in the audio waveform, editors can easily match the sound with the correct visual footage during post-production. Now, if we don't have a slate, we can simply use our hands and clap. Now in Premiere Pro, you see we have our video footage where we can see our visual clap as well as some external audio where we can see in our waveform where our clap occurs. Next, we wanna put both our clips on two different tracks. Then with them both selected, right click and select synchronize. We wanna make sure audio is selected so the sync is done based off analyzing our waveforms and matching them up. Now just hit okay and by default, the clip that is to the left on our timeline is gonna to move to the right in order to sync up with the other media file. Because auto sync isn't always perfect, what we're going to do next is unlink all our clips by hitting command or control L with them all selected. Then head to the sequence menu here and select show audio time unit. This is going to allow us to manually move our audio tracks in smaller increments so we can be even more precise when lining up our two waveforms to ensure the perfect sync. So with applying video effects, it's pretty straightforward. We search for our effect and drag and drop it onto our video file. Enough said. But with audio, there's a better way to do things. Now, of course, we can just drag and drop our desired effects onto our audio clips, but next time you're editing, try this. Head up to window and open up the audio track mixer. Here we'll see multiple audio tracks that correspond with the audio tracks in our timeline. What we can do is click this arrow to open up our audio effects and click this drop down to select our effects one by one. As we add the effects to our desired track, we can double click them to change the parameters. Now, remember this is going to affect everything on audio track one, so we want to be organized in our timeline. It's super important. I'll typically leave the first three audio tracks for dialogue, then another two for music, then like five for sound effects and ambience. Finally, if we want to add an effect to all the audio tracks, just come over to this mix track and add your effects here, which leads me to my next trick. For my next trick! So once we're happy with our video and audio, we can come over to this mix track here and under special, we're going to select mastering. I like to use the preset subtle clarity and then decrease the reverb amount to around 5%. Make sure to play around with your settings here to fit your specific needs, but remember that this is a great way to add that final mastering touch to your audio. So one of the best ways to end a music track in your edit is by echoing the final note like this. So to do that, we wanna find the moment in the track we want to end on and make a cut where the final note hits. It doesn't matter if it's the actual end of the song, it just has to be a predominant note that lingers a bit. Then we'll cut it off before any noticeable beat happens, but because we can't nest an audio clip by itself, we're gonna add an adjustment layer above our ending music section, but make sure the adjustment layer is quite a bit longer than the music clip. Then we wanna nest them both together, unlink the nest and delete the video section. Now we can apply a studio reverb effect and increase our decay setting as needed to get something that sounds like this. Next, if you're adjusting your track volume one by one like this, then you may wanna try this alternative method. So we can head over to this track keyframe icon here and click it. Go down to track keyframes and select volume. And now we have a new audio level line for our entire track one volume levels, as opposed to individual ones per clip. And now what we can do is hit P on our keyboard to bring up the pen tool, create some keyframes and adjust them as we see fit. You can do this for your dialogue, music, and even sound effects. And speaking of sound effects and other useful editing assets, check this out. If you're a video editor or content creator, then head over to motionelements.com. They have over 700,000 royalty-free music options, safe for use on YouTube, and that's only the beginning. From stock footage to After Effects templates, they have you covered for pretty much all of your creative needs. They even have an AI script writer that can plan your next video based on a few simple text prompts. And the best part of all is they have free options as well as paid options, so no matter your budget, Motion Elements has you covered. Use code JustinSaran9 when purchasing your subscription for 70% off your first month when you sign up for an unlimited subscription plan. So if you've ever noticed that no matter how low you put your background music volume in an edit, it always seems to either overpower your vocals like this, or it's too low to even notice. Well, here's an easy way to avoid that in the future. First, we're just gonna temporarily mute our music track. 
Then search for parametric equalizer on our effect panel and apply it to our dialogue audio and hit edit to open it up. Now we can play back our audio and make note of where the parametric EQ is present on our waveform here. So it looks like it's sitting around 700 for this example. So we can close this effects menu and delete the parametric EQ from our dialogue as we no longer need it. Now just search for simple parametric EQ and apply that to our music track before unmuting it. Now what we can do is set our center to around 700 because that's the range our vocals were sitting in. Think of it like you're carving out space for the music frequencies so your vocals can sit there and be more predominant. We can set our cue setting to around 15. This setting dictates how much is being carved out from our music track and I find 15 works well for most cases. Finally, just decrease the boost setting as needed and we should have a much better vocal mix. Yeah! So this next trick is gonna help you make any section of an edit you want to be way more dramatic. So let's say I have a clip of someone diving into the water and I really wanna slow down and amplify the moment they are submerged. So the first thing I would do is slow down the footage as they hit the water, but that's just not enough. So what I'll do as well is cut and isolate the section of my background music that matches the underwater slow-mo section. Then I'm gonna search for low pass in my effects and apply it to the isolated music section. Immediately we'll notice our music track sounds muffled, amplifying the fact our subject just dove underwater. Now, if we wanna make it even more muffled, just lower this cutoff setting as much as needed. And finally, add crossfades in and out of that music section to make the transition even smoother. Next, if you use Premiere Pro for a while, you may have seen this panner setting at the bottom of your audio effect controls, but maybe you've never bothered to even open it up. Well, if we open it up, we can actually achieve some pretty cool stuff with it. So imagine we need to add some sound design for a shot of a car driving across frame, entering in one side and out the other. We can import our sound effect of choice and match it up with our footage, but something still feels off. If we were actually to be in the environment on screen, the sound of the car passing by wouldn't be equally loud on each side, or constant in both of our ears at the same time. It would most likely transfer or pan from one side to the other, which is exactly what we can achieve with this panner setting. So if the car enters from the right, we can set a panner keyframe and set it to 90. This is gonna make sure 90% of the sound effects plays out of the viewer's right speaker or headphone. Then we can go to the moment the car leaves to the left, and we will add another keyframe and set it to negative 90 this time. Now, if we play it back, we have panning audio from right to left, which is going to make it sound 10 times more realistic. So next, I'm sure we've all heard of the Remix tool at this point, as it's been everywhere the last couple of years, but there's one important feature that I think a lot of people are overlooking. So we can obviously select our Music Remix tool and click and drag to our desired length to auto-remix our song in seconds. But sometimes the track ends up slightly too short or slightly too long, and sometimes the sections in the middle end up sounding a little funky. Well, the good news is if we select our music and head to the Essential Sound tab, and under Duration, we can open up this customized drop-down menu. And in here, we can play around with the number of segments and variations as well. Segments is gonna be how many actual edits are used to splice the track together, and variations is gonna be how many different sections of the song will be used overall. I found that playing around with these settings can help get the remix track to the perfect length in a pinch. Now, this last one is a little counterintuitive, but trust me, it'll make sense in a second. So if you've ever been working on an edit, maybe it's a music video and you're trying to cut on the beat of a song, obviously you'll go through finding all your beats and matching the cuts to them. But when you play it back, something still feels off. The cuts seem to be slightly off and it's making everything feel a little lackluster. Well, the trick for this is having the cut fall a frame before the actual beat. This gives the viewer's eyes just enough time to process the frame as we hear the beat and have it sound perfectly on beat. It seems to work quite well, so give it a try in your next edit. Now, finally, because I love you guys, I have one more bonus audio tip. If you update to the latest version of Premiere Pro, we now have access to Enhanced Speech, which was previously only available in Premiere Pro Beta. With Enhanced Speech, we can select our audio, label it as the type of audio it is, and simply hit Enhance. Then we can adjust the mix amount, and in literal seconds, we have a post-worthy mix on our vocals. But with that being said, if you learned something new today, please consider subscribing and comment the words Premiere Pro if you made it to the end of the video. I'd love to see you still watching. Peace.